This is Comic Picks by the Glick. Hey, I'm your host, Jason Glick. Hey, Jason Glick, what's going on? Hey, John, it's good. It's like things are like um, crazy and all the like, Hey, we're all, finally out of the trash fire that is um, 2020. I mean, I'm not saying that like you know it's like it's embers aren't gonna like start like you know like kicking up like some crazy stuff during um like early bits of 2021. But hey, you know like New Year, New Hope, New um Best of List. That, right. I find it ironic that you're going to pick the best out of that year. Yeah, it's like you know, it's like even though it's like it was like a kind of a kind of a terrible year by all accounts, and I'm not gonna argue that at any rate. You know, there were still lots and lots of comics. I mean, even though like you know, comics stopped shipping for like two whole months in 2020, there was still a lot of stuff like um like to pick from here. It's like and. So like when I started making my list here, it's like I started like pulling out. Hey, you know this sounds like a worthy like addition to like the best of list. Just make just picking up the stuff. I realized like wow, it's like I came with like so much stuff here that it's like wow. I'm kind of surprised that you know like hey this year produced so much good stuff because uh well even though it's like this is like a ter- kind of a terrible year by any counts by any reasonable metric. It's like you know there were still lots of great comics as well. Like, like to be had to be had to be experienced as well. Oh, and some terrible stuff as well. But yeah, you know, we're gonna like focus on like the best of stuff right here. And like, I just want to like kick things off with like the honorable mentions stuff that was like you know was really quite good, but you know just not quite good enough to uh, make the uh, like the, the best of list. And I want to start with um like um Once in the Future Volume One. Um, Kieran Gillen and Dan Mora's. Um, like like uh, exploration of it's like a, like a British, British history with a mix of Indiana Jones. It's like and it was like this first volume was like lots of fun. It's like and even though it's like you know positioned like the main character's like grandmother as being a like a terrible terrible person, that was actually more of a feature than a bug, and I really appreciated that. Also, um, there was um Star Wars um Doctor Aphra um Simon Spurrier's. Um, like dark and twisted exploration of like the weird corners of the Star Wars universe, and we took this like, like this um weird, it's like um supporting supporting character who made her debut in in Kieran Gillen's um like, um, Darth Vader um series, and like it's like he just like went and just like turned like started like asking like some some hard dark questions about her. It's like, and they turned out to be like really fun and really interesting in itself. And also, next was um, Pulp from like Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. And to be honest, the real trick here, real difficult thing here, was to determine like you know what um, like series from Brubaker and Phillips to include here. It's like as far as like you know what's the best best we got from 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 twenty twenty because they had a really banner year of stuff that that they delivered in um, in tree paperback form. And Pulp, like their story of a an, like an old. It's like an old outlaw turned turned pulp writer turned um social justice warrior, circa 1940, 1930. I mean, it's like was um, I had a lot to say at our about our present day, but um did it in a way that like you know spoke to its like its own present like um present event adventurous era, and I really like that. Uh, then there was um deceased unkillables. While um DC's um DC finally got their Marvel zombies in. Like in Tom Taylor and Trevor Harrison's um, deceased miniseries, um, deceased um, Unkillables was also written by Taylor, had art from Carl Mostert, and was focused on what were the bad guys doing um, during, it's like like um, during this um, anti-life zombie outbreak, and it turned out to be something that was a lot more clever, a lot more inventive, and a lot more fun than you would expect um, from the, like like from the setup of just, you know what the what would the heroes do it's like in this like um like superior universe zombie outbreak it's like and then there's also um undiscovered country on um, volume 1 which is one of my which is a surprising um like image launch from Charles Charles Soule, Scott Snyder and um Giuseppe Camicoli it's like that basically asked you know what happened if like America built the wall and then like walled itself off from the rest of the from the, rest of the world and then what happened when the world had to go in over the wall, and uh, in order to like like find out, you know what, you know what is America, in order to like save themselves from the uh, terrible outbreak that that um, had sprung up in the meantime. This is like a great. This was like a 
even though like it has these like you know, these highfalutin like ideals, it's like it's the series itself was borrowed much more from like you know something like Mad Max Fury Road. It's that should an America gone feral? It's like in like in the intervening decades and set up some interesting mis- mysteries in the meantime. I appreciated that as I did um, Death or Glory Volume Two from Rick Remender and and Bengal. While um, Remender's like like owed to like the op- the open roads and like the life lived off the grid, we're just kind of like yeah, you know, it's like I couldn't really like I don't care that much for it. Um, volume two had some of the absolute best action i've seen in in comics in a long time i mean like when you're talking about like hey you know it's like this this series is like a a mix of like you know fury road and xxx it's like you know like no it's like you want to say this series is a mix of death or glory volume two and xxx so because the uh it's like the action the act this is action on the page it's like that um, Remender and Bengal um, like delivered was amazing, and it's something that I recommend to like anyone who loves like reading like good action comics. I mean, like it would have made the top ten if it weren't for the fact that I think the story is just kind of like, eh, just you know, like hey, like you know, like hey, living living off the grid is better than living on the grid. Who knew? Oh, and then there's also like I'm um, John Constantine Hellblazer Volume One Marks of Woe. I've been waiting years for us to get a good, you know, John Constantine, um, mature readers like Hellblazer series back. And um, Simon Spurrier and Aaron Campbell and company, it's like they delivered that with this with this volume. And it's like I and you know, as much as I love it, the only reason it's not getting on the top ten list is because I think that the uh, whatever they're doing that what they've got in store for volume two is probably going to be um, better. It's like better than that, better than what we got here. I mean, like it's kind of disappointing that you know, like that. Um, Spurrier said he had plans for like going further than like you know twelve issues, but then I'm um, like you know DC's you know plans for for that you know just well, you know it's like it's kind of like impressive that it's impressive that DC is still publishing comics like as it is, and um, you know hey if they want to do more like mature readers John Constantine comics. That hey, you know, like I, I would love to see them like give them to, uh, like, give them back to Experience so he can continue what he was doing here. But still, this is just the honorable mention stuff. The real good stuff starts with my top ten, and at number ten is Superman Up in the Sky by Tom King and Adam Kuert. Yeah, sometimes the story can get a bit get ponderous, as is um, as is Tom King's want, and the art can be a bit stiff, like with. With um like with Adam Kubert and all and all, but even then, but both both creators both have a great idea of how to how to show you how Superman at his most um dynamic and inspiring. Like it's a story about like Superman going into the uh, it's like it's like in like into outer space to save one girl who was kidnapped by it's like by some like mysterious entity, and it's just showing you how like Superman is just not going to give up. In the face of any, um, like any obstacle that he faces, whether it's gonna be like a soup, like a super, like a uh, intergalactic boxer, it's like the uh, data in, data collected by the uh, by the Zeta beam, it's like, or I'm um, dark side, you know, like demanding that, um, hey, you know, like if you're gonna, if you're gonna, I know where the girl is, but you're gonna like, like, um, you're you're gonna to fall, you're gonna to be like disgrace yourself in order for me to uh, tell you, so. It's basically a story, like it's basically several stories of how Superman, like, will not quit, will not compromise. It's like in any any aspect, any aspect of his being, in order to like you know, do do right by us all. It's like it's like, and it's also like a social collection of the uh, twelve issue, like um twelve part story that was like told in the like uh, Superman um st- like uh giant issues that were like originally solicited to um walmart which i gotta admit it's like it's kind of impressive and all so like it's it's a series that like tells you like individual stories that work on their own terms and an overall story that works on its own term and and i really enjoyed it so better still was number nine uh, marauders by jerry dugan um mateo loli stefano stefano caselli and um, a bunch of other guys as well um 
I loved like a lot of the stuff that like X Men was do the X Men titles were doing it's like like over like over the past year. I mean it means like I think that that the relaunch that um Hick, Jonathan Hickman started with it's like with House of X and Powers of X is still like delivering like lots of lots of dividends here. But as far as like the best X title goes, it's not X Men. Even though I think that individual stories that Hickman did in X Men were arguably better than what they were what, were, what was done here. Um, Marauders, it's basically the story of of Kitty Pride and her it's like in her pirate pirate crew do, trying to do their best to like deliver it's like like deliver like other mutants to the um sanctity um sanctuary of of Kokoa and uh, it's like, and Kitty also like did dealing with her own issues um with uh like not being allowed onto Krakoa like well due to her like facing powers which we don't find out until later but it's also but it's like a but it's also like at the score it's a fun great pirate story and it it's like and um and it shows that the Jerry Dugan it's like you know even even if like he he wrote that like terrible dead Deadpool story that I'm um, ruined my interest in him running the character for years and if um his uh Infinity Wars um like storyline was just kind of like eh even if like it showed that he he does have talent as a writer Marauder showed that hey you know what like this guy like actually. You know, he may be like, just like all over the place, but this is something that like is all over the place, above the board. It's like, and I really enjoyed it. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you know where things go from here. It's like, even if like um Hickman's um X Men holds the key to what he's doing, like Marauders is most purely enjoyable. And um, but as far as like um like Superman stories go, well, there's one Superman adjacent story that I really truly enjoyed, and I'll write about it like eventually, and that is Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen. This is basically um, Matt Fraction and Steve Lieber being let loose upon um, the DC universe with uh with you know like I mean Jimmy Olsen has history with like Superman and all. I mean he's like the uh, like the photographer for the for like, for the for, for the Daily for the Daily Planet. But um, but um, Fraction and um, Lieber basically re- um like um revisit him as just like the guy who's like the the purest link to Superman's like crazy um like Silver Age stuff. Like the first issue basically has um like Jimmy Olsen like um di- um like diving in like to Metropolis from space, but then being turned into a uh, it's like it's like an a- it's like a lizard it's like it's like a lizard. Uh, was it a, a it's like a lizard, um, like turtle to um, like smash a uh, like smash a monument erected like erected by Le- Lex Luthor that um is also like holding up his plans to men- like uh, modernize Metropolis. It's goofy, really like really weird fun, but at the same time, it's just it shows that like um that fractions, um like his like his skills really lie is like in just in just like running wild with. Like um like C and D list characters from like um from Marvel and Marvel and DC because yes you know, like he he uh it's like he does some like crazy stuff with, with with Jimmy here and it's a lot of fun it's like and it's also kind of a perfect mic drop for him as well because I honestly don't see him doing anything else with um with DC as well after this I mean if he had like well, we've we'd have heard about it by now right right. Okay, but um, yeah, it's like I I I I loved um like Superman South Jimmy Olsen and even if it's the only thing we get from Matt Fraction working in the DCU, it's like it is like it is glorious as it is, and um after that though number seven is um Chainsaw Man. Now I'll be honest with you, if um if Tatsuki Fujimoto's um um Fire Punch had wrapped up um in 2020, then I may have included that. But um, Chainsaw Man is his glorious dumb ode to the to the slasher movie, to the Shonen Jump story of hey, you know, there's like there are demons in the real world, and oh, there's a secret demon hunting organization out there that's set to um, take them out. Well, th- this is him doing this is him doing his spin on that, and it's dumb, it's stupid, and it, it is like true to the spirit of any like person who was in touch with their inner 15 year old it's like and i it's like and i really enjoyed that it's like it's it's funny it's entertaining it's like it's like it's committed to its 
like to its like um puerile it's intent it's like and um and denji is just like a guy who like he is someone who just like you know his goal in life is to touch boobs at first and then when he but the thing is he eventually realizes that that goal and then he, then um he's eventually inspired to a a new like quote unquote deeper goal after that which you know like i'm i want to i want to know where that goes you know and all <laughs> as dumb as it is as dumb as it is so but after that is um my number six pick and that is batman white knight because you know hey god knows like there are so many batman comics published like last year there's so many batman comics published every year Batman White Knight, however, is the rare Batman comic that is dedicated to tearing down the Bat mythos, and um, it's like and just like like it telling us like you know what what can we like um, do after that? Because while like I thought the uh, first first volume of White Knight was you know it was entertaining, but it kind of I don't think it went far enough and just like you know something like a like an alternate universe Batman story, but White Knight basically just like asked asked hard questions about what you know, what Batman was set out to do, and then like showed Batman showed a showed a Batman who was willing to burn down his own mythos, like in order to like make make a better world, and also like a Harley, a Harley Quinn who was willing to um, work with him in order to do that. And I want to I really want to see like you know where um Sean Murphy takes this series, and um he's going and we'll see that you know with the. Uh, not not with like the inevitable like White Knight Volume Three, but with the uh, um White Knight Harley Quinn miniseries that is also um being serialized as we speak right now. So yeah, that like yeah, I, I am all for Batman, great Batman stories, and this one, like I said, just you know, it's tearing down what we know about Batman, and I can appreciate that right now. Um, on a different note, however, is something that um I really enjoyed, and um I really want to see more of. And I'm putting it here because, God damn it, anyone who's listening to this, like, you know, tell your friends, tell two of your friends, tell three of your friends to buy more of Mob Psycho 100. Now, my number six pick, sorry, my number five pick, God damn it, I'm not paying attention to what I've written on the front of my screen right here, but um, the story of, like, of a mob, the, uh, like the unassuming, you know, kid who's got like psychic powers, but to uh, but who will um like uh, disperse them like when she gets to like a like a hundred percent you know psychic distress. Well, it's like you know the story is just kind of like all about showing what does it mean to be like a good person. It's like and um while Mob like is trying to be that person, but the thing is like his influence has become from a psychic con man, um Reagan, his boss, who has no psychic powers but builds himself as a uh, as as an as an s s rank level exorcist no a level 131 rank um like exorcist but um well uh, the volumes of of mom psycho 100 we got like this year basically um like like delivered lots of like um grade a rank um like i'm showing them fighting stuff i mean anything anytime you can deliver like a uh like, like a like a smashing fight scene that doesn't take a whole volume to um to deliver. Um, all due respect to um, certain volumes of um One Punch Man we got during this year as well, but um One Punch Man, oh, sorry, One Mob Psycho One Hundred delivered lots of like great great action. It's like it also is like a good moral core as well. Like with um with the most recent vo volume, like I'm showing you, you know, how um how Mob realizes that hey you know. I can't if I can't use my my, my um sick powers against people because it's going to hurt them. What do I do with them? Well, it's like he's gonna he's gonna leave them to the one person who can do this, and that's Reagan. It's like and it's like the uh, it's like it's like and even then, like you know, like Reagan, it's like for even if he's just kind of like a uh, he's a con man, he's a con man with like an actual moral core to his to his being, and I really liked um seeing just you know, hey, what can we do with like you know. If we've got like a good moral um like core to our like two beings, what can we do with that? It's like and you know Reagan just you know he he, he not may not be like the most like uh like likable guy, but he is someone who's like who I can believe in. It's like and someone I would have no problems following in terms of like his his moral compass and all such as it is. And then after that, number four is something that you know like I I was kind of surprised to 
I find myself following, and that is a Redneck by Donny Cates and Lissandra Estherin. Prior to this, to 2020, Redneck was a series that you know I was just you know willing to buy. Like, hey, well, what when I need to like when I need to uh, make up the uh, like like the uh, like like the um buy like the, the buying quota like at like say at Comic Con or like hey in order to meet a certain like discount threshold, then yeah, I'd buy the series. But when I got Redneck Volume Three, it's like I got a, uh, I got a story that showed um that that showed like you know what it's like um like what happens to a uh, like like this family it is a family of vamp vampires who originally made their living like um like in a barbecue and in, in Texas and then things went bad for them but um with volume 3 it's like you know things we find out like we find out how like things are going the things like after things had gone um bad for them it's like we get from how they went went to um like re rebuild their rebuild their lives and become a, like a proper family again it's like and it's like, and there were some surprises as well. It's just like the um the time jump that showed um like one of its main characters like you know marrying like like a uh, like a woman who um who he had done wrong and just and it turned out to uh, and he had got to, got no again in the course of the course of the series and things had gone right again and then it's like and then things went really bad at the end of that volume and then when we got to volume four it's like oh man it's like it was just like the drama just kept turning and churning, like showing you like how the like how the good guys are like forced were were um forced to do bad things and the bad guys are forced to like were doing how the how the bad guys are doing like things that they thought were good for their own their own perspective. It's like and like with um in volume four there's this one moment where it's like where where like the the good vampire family just like you know, like one of their guys just he feels that hey, you're like I'm gonna like like team up with like this um ancient vampire clan that does you know that we, that we can't quite really trust but then the dad the granddad goes okay yeah i know i understand you're gonna do this but you know it's like here and i'm gonna get, give you the means in order to do that but at the same time like, i i understand what you're doing but i don't think it's right it's like it's it's one of those moments where you think like oh man this should be like there should be like fighting and like and bloodletting and like craziness and all, but you know it's like it's just like it's just a matter of like um one one member of the family letting them know that hey you know I understand you got to do what you got to do but I don't believe in it and then doing it without just you know raising their voice and that's that's kind of powerful it's it's a uh, it's something that um that I didn't expect and um, it's. And even if um you know like um Donny Cates uh, like decided to burn down um the Sesco we set up like multiple times like after that it's like I got it was like it was unexpected but it felt like unbelievable as, as well and like I'm really looking forward to reading um the next volume which is coming out in March and um after that well man it's like I want to know what's gonna happen next oh but so be sure to buy that and also. Be sure to buy volumes of Mob Psycho 100 because I really don't know if Dark Horse is going to con continue to um, publish new volumes now that they've reached um, volume six. Please buy new volumes of of, of Mob Psycho 100, please. But um, as far as we're talking about, like a manga um, whose um, series I think is um, like features assured, um, aside from it's like overall like hey you know this series is like really good and also it's got an automated there's like winning new fans with each um, installation well we've got golden kamui the story of um of like of not just one man um immortal sugimoto who is trying to um like help help this um i this um i knew this indigenous um some um, hokkaiden girl um it's like a surfa try you know get the uh get the gold that's like that was that's in that's a, that's been entrusted to her, it's like like to her tribe. It's like well, this is a series that just that just like um delivered one of its like most game changing like installments with um it's like like over the year with like um with volume fourteen with, as it just like showed what happened when um it's like when it's like when the crew uh, burst into the prison that was holding a surface surp dead and how everything went wrong. It's like in 
in the course of the uh, the fight, but it also delivered like you know like some just like really it's like like in like uh, moments where um like where um Sugimoto met with the serpent's dad and got some like some like um get important news before he was before the guy was killed by some people that we thought um were um like were on on our side. It's like and there was just like so much like crazy stuff that happened happened here. It's like from the like not just from the uh from the fight, but then from finding out that a serpent's dad was um like part of the um Russian Revolution that killed killed the Tsar that set off war, World War One. It's like or um when um Sugimoto and his it's like and his crew had to, like um participate in a uh it's like it's like in a rush it's like in a uh, in a circus act that was um being run by an actual spy for the for the Japanese army. It's like it's like it's like it's a series just like that just like delivers like crazy like plot twists and um like really it's like over the top like over the top action as well. It's like and it and it's something that just and even then, like even as it delivers all these like crazy stuff, it also has a like, has a clear, um, it's a clear direction of like you know where it, where it's going as well. Because even if like the series is going like you know, like have diverged into some plot lines where oh my god they're gonna fight a Wolverine who maybe not is even the best at what he is at what he does, or when they fight in um Russian um, like Russian wall fighting um Stenka, it's like and um and. Su- Immortal Sugimoto like goes into his own berserker rage. It's like it's like it's still in it's still entertaining. It's still fun. It's like and I really like I really enjoy it. To the point where it's like I had no problem running like like running a week where I did like, you know, four volumes of um of, of Golden Kamui the reviews like in, in one week. And oh and funny about that, I've still I got more I got um volumes eight, reviews of volume eighteen and nineteen to run at some point as well. But I've got no, no qualms running them because, like, you know, volumes eighteen, nineteen, <laughs> like, you know, there's still more proof why this, like, why the series wound up at number three in my point, at my ranking here. But as far as what got got in volume num- in ranking number two, well, you know, it's like some uh, there's one team that, like, you know, I would think that, like, hey, like, if you're gonna want wonder, like, who um who's gonna like um like get recognition at this like, in my top 10 list you know it would be Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips but it's more of a question of like you know what volume from Brubaker and Phillips was going to run up here because like hey I mean I already mentioned them pulp so that's not obviously not going to be it but what about Reckless or what about um, Cruel Summer like the actual like um, volume 8 of um, of Criminal and I'm um, so because like these guys have done like consistently great work over the years and um and i love what they've done and i was gonna like say and when it came down to like saying you know, what 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 um volume of their work actually deserved a spot in my top 10 well it was gonna be the one that i did a podcast about and that is yes cruel summer is like number two pick of my of the year because the story of um teague lawless and the time that he fell in love it's like and the uh, tragedy that resulted from that. It's like, yeah, it's like, this is like, even it's volume eight of Criminal even doesn't say it on its spine. And it's a series, and it's a volume that basically like turns Criminal into a, into a perfect circle. It's like of, like of crime stories. And if Brubaker and Phillips never do another Criminal story after this, I think that, that, you know, the series is, like is it's, it's, its reputation is rock is rock solid. It's like just I mean it's it like uh like <sighs> Cruel Summer just tells tell, fills in a lot of gaps. It's like about what what we what we knew about the uh like the law, lawless family. It's like and even though it was like we like some of the things we had heard about, you know, it's like we could have filled in before that. It's like just seeing them here. It's like is just is because is just a revelation. It's like it basically tells us, you know, like you know, like how Ricky Lawless, you know, turned into like the self-destructive um, character that we um, knew from his passing way back in Volume Two. It tells us, you know, like how it's like how Leo, it's like how I like, go, you know, just just how how Leo, like the guy who just. Who always had like the uh, perfect out for anything, just you know, 
developed that. It's like in it's like in the moment where he killed like you know like um where he killed Teague. It's like and just how like you know we knew that Teague was just like you know was just like too like too angry, too vicious to like to live. It's like it's like um based based on based based on what we've what we've heard about him up to this point. And this series just like kinda of spills it out. It's like if you um if you hadn't gotten to that point as well. So yeah, it's like um Cruel Summer, like even though it's like it's kinda of, it's 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 built as, as its own thing. It's like it's basically the uh connecting point to um like to criminal. Like it's it's basically like just you know like turning criminal into like it's like its own self connected story and like anything else that Rubik and Phil do are just gonna add to that as opposed to just you know like like completing it. But another series, you know, also kinda did that on its own terms as well. Or rather it's like it just basically showed that yeah, you know, it's like you don't have to be, you know, like the the creator of a series in order to uh show that you can you can like um, push it forward on its own terms as well. You can actually, if you've got a good solid plan, it's like you can take a series that, while not creator owned, um, was purely identified through one creator. It's like, and um, it's like and it's like, and drive it forward on on its own terms and 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 doing it like in the sense that you know, hey, it's like the you know, just just not in terms of like a. Uh, like a pure franchise franchise extension, just you know, hey, this is something that that ha- that ha- that um deserves, um, it's it's like it it deserves like um like talented creators pushing it forward, like as as far as things go. So yeah, so uh, and um, I guess what I'm saying here is if you remember what I said about um, like uh, the dreaming by um Simon Spurrier, Bill Key Everly. And the creators like like Abigail Larson and Matthias Bergara, then yeah, my best pick for um my pick number one pick for the year is um the dreaming, because you know, like the uh, Sandman is one of my favorite comic book series of all time. It is still number two behind Nashka the Valley of Wind. If you're going to try and um you know add something to that. Well, you better step up, motherfucker, because if you don't, like, I'm just gonna, like, you know, sh- like, just, like, like, throw your ass down to the, like, the worst of the year. I'm gonna tell you, it's like, you know, you're, like, you're nothing. It's like, you're, you're just, like, terrible. It's like, why are you even trying this? Simon Spurrier, however, is the kind of guy who is not going to, like, you know, like, stand for a, uh, it's like, very simple, re- like, reinvention of the, uh, of the same mythos, like he's he has got a plan for like what um for for what um Daniel the Sandman ha- like stands for, and um what people are going to try and do with him as well. Like what what is corp what are corporations like have planned for him? Like what are they going to do with 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 the dreaming? It's like and and what he does here, it's like is it's like it's like is impressive. It's like it just shows you just you know like what. Like just the need for the need for imagination, like for creativity. It's like it's like in a world that you don't know, like arguably like you know, just trying to like snuff those out or appropriate them for their for its own means. It's like I love this, love what he did here, and um, it's it's like even though it's like you know, like I said, it's just like you know, like twenty issues of what of like of of, of the series. It's like he told like a good complete cohesive story here it's like and i think it's a very worthy addition to like to the salmon mythos like if you're looking at if you look at the salmon mythos and you think like oh this is something that you know can only be added to by neil gaiman nope i think that like Ga- that spurrier shows that you can do you can add to it as well that if you've got a good solid plan it's like, and you know what you're doing here to that to that end I am very much looking forward to what um, G. Willow Wilson and Nick Robles are doing with their um, maxi series on um, the Sandman Waking Hours as well. So, but um, basically, you know, the dreaming shows you can go home again, and and I know there are a lot of Sandman fans out there. So, like, hey, so like, and if you're if you're 
like feeling apprehensive about like, oh no, it's like someone's adding to the mythos. Well, no, don't worry about it. Spurrier knows what he's doing and he's got you covered. But um you know, like after that, you know, what happens if the hadn't worked? What about the worst of the year? Like what about stuff that you know hadn't quite um people had hadn't quite um like displayed the level of imagination that um that you got with that series. Well, then you get stuff like um, Star Wars Target Vader by Robbie Thompson and a whole bunch of artists that are dedicated to like trying to make um, like uh, 80s era um, Marvel like Star Wars cyborg um, ba- Baylord Valance a thing. And no, it's like that that didn't work. It was just kind of like hey, the, the overall story was boring and the fact that they had they had like five other um, artists like um, thrown at the series in order to uh, like deliver it deliver on time was like really disappointing um then you've got like and then there's stuff like joker killer smile by um jeff lanier and andrea sorrentino yes it looked visually stunning thanks to sorrentino but um jeff lanier who is a writer who has i I believe has done good work in the past but now it's like everything he does just kind of feels blah it's like just familiar and it's like and by the book and like reading killer smile it's like i mean you get the like three issue like main main series and then what follows after that it's like oh man it's like i thought i could have done something better uh that's and that's ne- i know i couldn't have but you know like when you leave with that feeling like that's never a good sign neither is the fact that with um like brian michael bendis and alex Maliz, um event leviathan which took two issues of of story about who is Leviathan and spun it out into six, which was a this is like a depressing, um, it's like and like unentertaining like like um like feat like to the point where like once we finally found out who Leviathan was, we realized that oh wait you should have like revealed this in in issue two, so that we could actually like you know ha- had some reason to care about who this character was. Yeah. There, so that that's it. And then there's like stuff like, like um, Inio Asano's downfall, which was um, like, like the like creator just like you know pontificating about the difficulty of creating manga, but um also also delivering us a uh, like a um relatively uninspiring um, manga in itself. And um oh, and then there's also like um Sutomi Niha's downfall, which you know, after our, after four volumes, I realized that like. I guess like a creator who just like you know, who had been pursuing like his own weird muse, like the series like like Blam, um, Bi Omega, and um, Second Nights of Sidonia had finally succumbed to like the the um, bland siren call of the mainstream, like with the series, just like a he some like a guy whose weird a noble muse had just delivered, um, like a um, bland. It's like a blend, um, like science fiction action series, but still, I guess that compares nothing to you. Um, my absolute worst pick for the worst here that is Gigant by Hiroya Oku. He is a guy who, um, who's who's been interested with this like 15 year old, like through the science fiction action series Gantz, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, and then there, and also, um, in Inu- Yashiki, which is a series is all about like you know, hey, you know, you you young kids get off my lawn, and it's like and uh, G- Gigant is all about like yeah, you know, like the uh, your inner fifteen year old who gets to have sex with that porn star that he always liked. Oh, but it turns out that this porn star like is able to um, turn herself into a giant in order to fight off the uh, aliens that are attacking attacking Earth, which okay, sure. And um, and really, it's like Gigant is here because even after I, I like I read vo- I read volume one, I was like, I was kind of like, I, I was disappointed, but I figured like, okay, well, he's a guy who wrote Gantz, so maybe he's got some plans here. And then volume two realized that oh well, like okay, you got a giant porn star fighting um giant monsters, or uh, okay, volume three basically um shows you that hey, you know, it's like. The real, re- in order to get anything you want with this with this series, you know, it's like you gotta, it's like you gotta um cry. It's like you, like, 
you got to be like the main, the main character who just like cries after the porn star won't sleep with him in Vine 2. Or the porn star who just like realizes that, oh my god, I've slept with this like underage kid and it's and his parents are calling me out of this. Like, wah! Uh, it's it's a series that I expect you to take, take ridiculous stuff seriously and it's really disappointing. I mean, like, I talk about series that, you know, like, that are entertaining if you're in touch with your inner 15 year old. Like, say, um, hero, like, say, um, ah, uh, ah, uh, what am I talking about here? Um, Akira Hiromoto's, um, it's like Raw Hero, it's like, or even his, like, his definitive series, Prison School. It's like, you know, just like, hey, you know, you, if you're able to, uh, you know, take those series seriously, then, um, it's like, then, you, you, then you're, you're going to get some fun out of them. Like, if you're in touch with a 15 year old. But, um, but, um, Gigant just makes me ashamed that I'm in touch with a 15 year old. Yeah, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm in touch with a 15 year old if it means liking, liking series like this. But I don't like series like this. So I guess it's all right. Well, no, because, like, because Gigant is terrible. It's like, and nobody should buy it. It's like, and if I hear more people talking about it as being their, like, their worst of, worst read of, like, last year, then, yeah, I can believe that. Okay. But, you know, it's like, don't want to end on, like, the, uh, worst of, worst of the year, because, like, there's still, like, reasons to be hopeful for, for next year. Stuff like, um, the end of Ajin, which I think is going to happen, not, maybe with, uh, volume 16, Maybe with volume seventeen, I don't know, but like it feels. But the um, volume I read, last time I read volume sixteen, felt um pretty penultimate t- t- uh, as well. Same with um the end of the girl from the other side, which really felt um like like volume nine was like the next to last volume. Like if it's not, well, we'll see. But I I really feel that feel that it is. Same goes with like the currently serialized version of volume of American Vampire, which is basically this has just been extended to volume ten. I'm sorry, issue ten, like from Scott Snyder and um it's like and Rafael Albuquerque and it's like and friends. So whether or not it actually is the end of the series, like I like I really want to know. So it's like and I and I hope that it's good because you know these e the series has been kind of un- uneven, but like I kind of, but I appreciate the fact that they're finally, like, you know, getting around to delivering like the uh, the final, like a finale, proper finale for this series. And then there's like um like um Ten of Swords or X of Swords, like the uh, first major um, X Men crossover, like from the Hickman era, and it also like aims to be the uh, like, like like a series that like pushes the overall storyline that he's advancing, like from like from this like from this era as well. It's like I will, um, de- I've already got, I've got this or- volume pre-ordered from Amazon, and as soon as, like, everything is wrapped up from, like, rep- as soon as it's wrapped up on, um, Marvel Limited, I will, like, likely be inv- inviting um, Rob back to talk about this. Same goes with, like, I will be t- inviting Myron back to talk about, um, um, the uh, King in Black, um, um, series from, like, from Marvel as well, because, like, this is a series that's been spun out of Dunny Case's Venom, and it's something that I've, I've enjoyed. It's like I'm. I, I've. It's like I've looked forward to following. It's like and and King in Black is like it is like the next major advancement of of that story. And I want to see where that goes. It's like where that goes from here. It's like oh, and also it's like because this is like a like like a crazy year. It's like it turns out we're getting like um volumes of not just um not getting new volumes of um of Vinland Saga, but we're also getting a new volume of D Virgil there as well. So I am thoroughly um looking forward to uh like getting um like finding out what's happening in those series as well because like the way things have gone for those series like the, they're published in two and one volumes from Kodansha. So I am l- very much looking forward to seeing what they've got um like in store for us as well. And terms of they'll be hap- they'll be um um like uh like debuting in like the first um semester of the year so yeah that's something i'm very much looking forward to so i can so yeah like 2021 it's like it has a lot to look forward to i mean yeah it's like it's not hard to improve over 2021 sorry over 2020 in general but it's like you know hey i think that you know like this this next year like has 
it has promise and all. And I guess like, you know, like it, it's like, you know, 2020 was a giant trash fire, but you know, I think that, you know, like the bar has been set so low that, you know, maybe like things will get a lot better, like, like from here on out. At least I hope so. John, um, I don't know. It's like, do you, do you think that things will get better from, from here on out and all? Well, I guess that's a matter of perspective. Um, I like um, White Knight. I thought that that was an excellent title. Yeah. So I mean, like, I mean, he's like he's got his uh, like um, Harley Quinn um, White Knight miniseries. So you're going to be like invested in like checking that out when it's collected, right? Absolutely. All right. So and so, I, are there any are there any other like reasons you want to look that we should be looking forward to? what 2021 has to offer? I mean, just oh. like it's not 2020? <laughs> well, I don't want to already say that 2021 really hasn't started any better than 2020. So I'm going to just reserve my comment on that. <laughs> so, um, well, we could still go to, go to movie, go to, go see movies in theaters at this point right now in 2020, like mm -hmm. right now, but I guess, so I, 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 I hope I, for the best, but I hope for the yeah. best at the beginning of 2022. So, and, um, you know, I'm hoping that, uh, eventually things will start ironing themselves out. So that's my, that's my prediction. However, when it comes to the graphic novel front, yeah, I, I'm, I'm eager to look forward to see what creative things, um, I don't think last year was some kind of a, 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 uh, a, a drought for creativity when it comes to you know um, good media. lord all 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 side to cut out for the uh, honorable mentions at least yeah mm -hmm. like, this is, there was still like there was, this was not a drought year at least yeah I, exactly and not to mention you know we had uh, some some most excellent uh, you know and I know this is your comic podcast but you know we've had some you know really good stuff that. Um, uh, premiered itself on on you know like streaming services, which uh, you know may may also be a new trend you know that started last year, and uh, you know um, we'll be which talking maybe, more about those like things like the Mandalorian and such like that. So I think maybe relevant to stuff we're talking about in like um podcast adjacent to this one. That absolutely. You bet. You know. So <laughs> I I think that uh, you know while there was a lot of of, of crappiness. I think that a lot of, I think that um, companies and people were really innovative. So this is my point of view and things, you know, will change. And I think change is a good thing. Indeed. So do you know what you're going to be talking about next time? All right. Next time is going to be that cosmic Marvel, according to Donnie Cates, because like he's a character, he's a writer who's like done a lot of stuff in this area, but he has not like done a whole lot of like ongoing stuff, but he's like, Provided a lot of stuff that like has been is going to be deeply influential to Marvel's cosmic side like going forward, and then after that, it's like I feel confident saying like you know, like there's gonna be like another podcast after that, after that that like, I've got I got going. It's like and then there's gonna be like maybe like Gideon Falls by um Jeff Lemire and Adrian Sorrentino, which you know I'm very much expecting to be a series that is carried um at the end by its artist. But um, could I be wrong? Maybe. I really don't think so. But we'll see. All right. And we'll catch you next time on Comet Picks by the Glick. All right. Laters. <laughs>